And good morning and God bless each and every one of you that are here today. Those that are have tuned in, God bless you. Amen. We're going to get started with our service. We're going to open up to the book of Psalms, chapter 26, verse 2 and 3. When you have it, you can say amen. Amen. And the word reads, test me, Lord, and try me. <laughs> Examine my heart and mind. For your faithful love guides me, and I live by your truth. Amen. Father God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I praise you, Father God. I thank you for your word, Father God. I, without your word, Father God, we'd be lost, Lord. I thank you, Father God, to the opportunity to be able to come into your house, be able to worship you freely, Father God. I pray for those that are on their way, Lord Jesus, those that are just tuning in, give them a double blessing, Father God. But I, I continue to lift up my sister Alex, Father God, and her siblings and her mother, Father God, and her kids, Father God. Be with them, strengthen them, Father God. Give her a healing touch, Father God. Come to her, Lord Jesus, as she lays there, Father God, and minister to her heart. But have full control of this service. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Come on. Jesus, I'll never forget. Come on now. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Open blind eyes and set the captive free. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Open blind eyes and set the captive free. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that changed a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I found I was blind, but now I see. Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line, tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line now. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line. Tell them what you want. Jesus on the main line now. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. Because the Lord is on my side. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. You better watch out, Satan, watch out, cause I'm coming through. Because the Lord is on my side. I refuse, I won't let nobody Still my joy, still my joy, I refuse, I 
won't let nobody sell my joy. Sell my joy. I refuse. I won't let nobody sell my joy. Sell my joy. I refuse. I won't let nobody sell my joy. Sell my joy. I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. Steal my joy. I refuse. I won't let nobody steal my joy. Steal my joy. Why? Because the joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Lord, 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 you've really been good to me. Come on. Lord, 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 you've really been good to me. Lord, 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 you really been good to me. You really been good. You really been good. You really been good to me. Lord, 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 you really been good to me. Lord, 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 you really been good to me. Lord, 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 you really been good to me. You really been good. You really been good. You really been good. You really been good. You really been good to me. Amen. 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 Every praise is to our God. Amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Come on, sing. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior, yes, he is. God, my healer, yes, he is. God, my deliverer, yes, he is, yes, he is. God, my Savior, yes, he is. Yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing. 
sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Come on, sing. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. Yes, he is. God, my healer. Yes, he is. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God, my Savior. Yes, he is. God, my healer. Yes, he is. God, my deliverer. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen, amen, amen. We're going to slow it down just a little bit. We're going to do some Spanish. Amen? Amen. Amen, amen. El Espíritu de Dios. El Espíritu de Dios está en este lugar. El Espíritu de Dios se mueve en este lugar. Está aquí para consolar. Está aquí para liberar, está aquí para guiar, el Espíritu de Dios está aquí. El Espíritu de Dios está en este lugar. El Espíritu de Dios se mueve en este lugar. Está aquí para consolar. Está aquí para liberar. Está aquí para ella. El Espíritu de Dios está aquí. Muévete mí, muévete mí, toca mi mente, mi corazón, en la mi vida de tu amor, muévete mí, Dios Espíritu, muévete mí. Muévete mí, el Espíritu de Dios está en este lugar. Aleluya. El Espíritu de Dios se mueve en este lugar. Está aquí para Está aquí para liberar, está aquí para ella, el Espíritu de Dios está aquí. Muévete, 
to him too. Amen. Come on. Hear this praise from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, my praises start. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Come on, hear this praise. Hear this praise from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, my praises start. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you, my soul sings. In your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much. Jesus, I love you so much. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. My soul sings. And in your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much. Jesus. I love you so much. Hear this praise. Hear this praise from a grateful heart. Each time I think of you, my praises start. I love you so much. Jesus. I love you so much. Hear this praise. Hear this praise from a grateful heart. Come on, Monica. Each 
time I think of you, my praise is God. Yes, I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much, Lord. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. My soul sings. In your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much, Lord. I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. My soul sings. And in your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Oh, I love you. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. How many of you can say I love you so much? I love you so much. Come on, tell them. Jesus. Lord, I love you. My soul sings. And in your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Lord, I love you, Lord. Lord, I love you. My soul sings. And in your presence, carry on your wings. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Oh, I love you. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. I love you so much, Jesus. I love you so much. Hallelujah. Glory to amen, God. Amen, amen, amen. Come on now. You when we're not in church, we need to let our light shine, right? We, wherever we may go, come on, outside, inside, at work, at school, wherever you may be, you have to let your light shine. Come on now. And don't go hiding it under a bush. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I don't see your no lights I'm gonna let it shine Gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Come on, everywhere Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bush. Don't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let Satan blow it out. I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let no no blow it. Uh -uh. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna, gonna let, let it shine. 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 Let it sh
shine all over San Jose. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over San Jose. I'm gonna let it shine. Shine all over San Jose. I'm gonna let it shine. Gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. This little light. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. Amen, amen, amen. Are you ready for the word? Are you ready for the teaching of God? Amen. From the man of God, Brother Joey Adair. Amen. Amen, amen. Come on, church. Don't get quiet. Praise the Lord, saints. Wow. I just broke it, Tommy. <laughs> Can you help me with that? That's okay. Okay. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Patiently waiting. I'm not worried about the time, Lord, I seem to find more strength while I'm waiting, more strength while I'm waiting, more strength while I'm waiting on oh, Waiting on you, waiting on you, patiently waiting on you. I'm not worried about the time, Lord, I seem to find more strength. While I'm waiting, more strength. While I'm waiting, more strength. While I'm waiting on you. Brother Sonny, let me slow it down just a little bit. You know, I don't know if you're in this kind of a situation right now. Got a call from my sister-in-law this week, and she was letting me know that for the second time this week, she was on her way back to emergency. And I 
think about her and I think about the people like Wednesday night, Pastor, that Rosie asking for prayer for people. Pastor was asking for prayer for people. And we know people that that are waiting for God's touch. So I, I lift those people up right now. The Cardona family, my sister-in-law, Adrian said his mother is suffering from mental and, and physical pain. Rosie is asking for comfort for her son's family and for him. So many other prayers on that list. And they're waiting on you, Lord. They're patiently waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Waiting on you. Patiently waiting on you. I'm not Worried about the time, Lord, I seem to find more strength while I'm waiting. Give more strength while I'm waiting. Give more strength while I'm waiting on you. Not worried about the time, cause Lord, I seem to find more strength while I'm waiting, more strength while I'm waiting, more strength while I'm waiting, while I'm waiting on you. Lord Jesus Christ, all those people that are writing in today with their prayer requests, those ones from Friday night or or Wednesday, Lord, or last Sunday, or all this month, some of those prayers are still on the list. Some of those prayers are still up before you. And then we talked on Mother's Day that some prayers stay before you for years, Lord. And those mothers, some of them are still here and some of them have gone on. But those prayers are still waiting on you, Lord. Lord, they're waiting for you to reach out and grab their sons and daughters and save them real, real good in Jesus' name. Other people are waiting on you to touch their bodies, Lord. Some people are waiting on you to touch their finances, Lord. Some people are in hard situations, Lord, that they see no way out. Only through you can they get out. You are the ones that will make a way of escape that they may be able to bear it. Stretch out your nail-scarred hand, Lord. That same nail-scarred hand from Calvary's cross. Touch it out now. Stretch it out now and touch somebody there in Facebook. Somebody that's got a problem with their leg, uh, fallen and hurt their ankle and their leg, Lord Jesus, intercede for them. Somebody that's got neck and back problems, Lord. Somebody that's in emergency or in the hospital, Lord. Lord, somebody that's in a convalescent home or somebody that's going through. You know all of these situations, Lord. We need a mental touch. We need an emotional touch. We need a physical touch. We need a spiritual touch. And even some need a financial touch. Intercede, Father. Intercede, Lord Jesus. Intercede. And we thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord Jesus. We're patiently waiting on you. We're not worried about the time. 
because our God is always on time. Lord, I seem to find more strength while I'm waiting. More strength while I'm waiting. Give more strength while I'm waiting on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. To our God be the glory for the things that he is doing. Amen. Thank you both very, very much. All right. I trust in God wherever I may Upon the land or on the rolling sea, for come what may, from day to day, my heavenly Father watches over. I trust in God. I know he cares for me. On the mountains bleak, Sandra, or on life's stormy sea, though billows <clears throat> He's keeping my soul, my heavenly Father watches over, he watches over me, thank you Jesus, amen, amen, okay. Well, let's do this Bible study. <clears throat> Today our lesson is God's word cites outside sources. Hmm. God's word cites outside sources. This series that we have been studying is a series called How to Study the Bible. Right. And uh, he's, he's come up with some interesting um, studying scripture in community we looked at last week, memorizing and meditating on God's word. It's been some it's been some good ones. Scripture fulfills scripture. But this one is God cites outside sources. And I guess the reason he wants you to know these things is he doesn't want you to be surprised or confused or have a bone in your throat if you find out that something is written somewhere else. The apostles, the prophets, they lived in a culture and in a time, and there were things going on in their culture and time. Books were being, being written and things were being said. And some of those things, uh, the people were very familiar with. And so if they took a very familiar something that was being said and added it into their message and it helped propel their message, it was just something, it was a means of, where you already knew this or you were hearing this or you were learning this and as he incorporated it into his message it would it would help you to be able to relate to what he was saying 
I wish I could give you some right now 2023 20, examples of something somebody saying out there that we can tie to a scripture. But anyway, we'll, we'll do what the lesson says, okay? God's word cites outside sources. Let's get started. Does everybody have either a book or the paper? Okay. Okay, we're ready to get rolling. We often study the Bible in a vacuum, forgetting that although it is the inspired word of God, it was written at the same time and in the same cultures that other works were also written. The lesson looks at the way the authors, inspired by the Holy Spirit, sometimes interreacted with other written documents to make the message clearer to their contemporary audience. So something is being said out there and, you know, and you put that saying here. And then when someone read your, your, your letter later on, they say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with that. So it helps them to get uh, the message clear. It also offers a pattern for engaging our culture in similar ways. I'm going to read something else I don't normally read, but I want to get a little piece of this. Biblical authors and speakers conveying God's word under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit occasionally use out, uh, sources outside of the scriptures to engage their audience and communicate truth. At times, they were supporting their historical accounts by no noting other historical records. Other times they cited recognizable poetry or sayings to create a point of connection with their audience. They were not diluting or compromising God's message or conforming it to the culture. Instead, they use these sources to effectively communicate the message. Studying how they use these extra biblical sources can inform the way we use similar tools to engage in dialogue with the world to proclaim the gospel. Boy, that was a mouthful right there. That, was, that sentence was as long as a freight train. But anyway. So let's see what we got going on here. God's word cites outside sources. And this guy is telling me I'm going to go here to the scriptures. Now, are you ready for some word now? Amen. Okay, we, got, we did some introduction. Let's do some word now. Let's go to Joshua 10th chapter. I don't hear no pages wrestling. <laughs> what kind of Bibles they got that are so silent, Pastor? Got those quiet Bibles. You don't even hear pages turning. Joshua. We're going to go to Joshua chapter 10. Huh? Somebody say something? Joshua chapter 10, verse 12. Let's see. Oh, no. Let's don't go to. Let's don't go. Chapter 10. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Let's go to verse six. We need to we need to get a little background here. Joshua chapter ten, verse six. I'm in the King James Version and and I apologize for that if that's uh if that's not the way you normally roll. And the men of Gibeon sent unto Joshua to the camp uh to Gilgal saying, Slack not your hand from your servant. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us. 
for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the mountains are gathered together against us. I need help, they were saying. I need help. Hmm. So Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear them not, for I have delivered them into your hand. There shall not a man of them stand before thee. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. Can you turn me down just a little bit so that I can, I feel like I might want to yell or something a little later, <coughs> and I don't want to blow your speakers. Okay, so the men of Gibeon, how many of you, I need to see some hands, how many of you know about the Gibeonites? Uh -huh. Come on, Brother Sonny, don't put your hand up. All right, all right, all right. Sonny Pastor, Sonny Pastor. You know what? You take care of it when, you, when it's your turn. <laughs> the Gibeonites. Okay, so when, when, when Joshua was going through and he was conquering the promised land that God had offered to give to them, but I want you to do something. I want you to get your hands dirty. I want you to be willing to fight. We have our salvation, but there are some things we need to do. Huh? He left some things for us to do. That's right. Touch not the unclean thing. Mm -hmm. Then I'll be a father to you, and you can be my sons and daughters. God, why'd you have to leave something for me to do? Couldn't you do it all? Yeah. Well, he did. Jesus paid it all. Uh -huh. He did pay it all. But he left something for you to do, and I'm so glad he did it. Okay, so the Gibeonites were one of those countries one of those states, one of those group of people that were going to be conquered by Joshua. The Gibeonites saw them coming and they said, now how can we, we, we need to find a way. So what the Gibeonites did was they took some clothes. I didn't have time to make me some old Gibeonite clothes this morning. But they took some clothes and tore them up and made them look like they were very old. No knees and the rear end out. And, 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 and you know, today you guys pay big money to walk around with your pants all slid up. Okay, but the Gibeonites did that. Then they got them some moldy bread. I don't know where they found moldy bread. You can find moldy cheese real easy. But they got some moldy bread and some moldy uh, cheese and some moldy meat and they got some worn out sandals. Maybe they went through town and took all the poor people and said, give me your clothes right now. I'll buy them from you. And when they put on all of this stuff, then they went to go meet Joshua with all these rags on. And they say, Joshua, we, we heard about you. The Lord is on your side and you're conquering the land. We live far away. And we came over here, and we want to make a treaty with you. Look look at our bread, how moldy it is. We've been traveling for a long time. Uh -huh. Look at our cheese. Look at our meat. Look at, look at my sandals. There's a hole in the bottom. We've been traveling a long time. But we'd like to make a treaty with you. Joshua made a mistake that we sometimes make. He did not pray first. He did not consult the Lord. And he made a treaty with them. Okay, I'll be your friend. I got your back. You got my back. We okay. I'll protect you. You protect me. Okay. And so it turns out that, like Brother Sonny said, the Gibeonites lied. They didn't live far away. They were close by. And Joshua found out that he had been deceived. Now, when these kings, these Amorite kings, found out that Joshua had made a covenant with the Gibeonites, they said, oh, we got to go destroy, destroy them. Instead of them standing with us, they've lined up themselves with the Israelites, 
and they have to be destroyed. And so they attacked the Gibeonites. Well, as soon as they attacked the Gibeonites, the Gibeonites got out their telephone and they started dialing Joshua. We need you here right now. You promised us in the name of the Lord, your God, that you would watch our back, that you would protect us. Okay? And so Joshua had to keep his vow. And so that's where we are here. Verse 7, so Joshua ascended from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. And the Lord said unto Joshua, fear them not, those Amorites, fear them not. Uh, for, I, for I have delivered them into your hand, and there shall not a man of them stand before you. Joshua therefore came unto them suddenly. And went up from Gilgal all night. They marched all night long. And the Lord discomforted them before Yasharel, before Israel, and slew them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them along the way that goeth up to Beth Horon, and smote them to Ashkelah and to Mechada. And it came to pass as they fled from before Israel and were going down into Beth Horon that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven upon them. How many of you have seen hail? Hail big as golf balls. Okay. You wouldn't want to get hit upside the head with one of those. You wouldn't want your car out and, and being pummeled by hailstones as large as golf balls. But this says that the Lord cast down great stones from heaven, hailstones upon them, and they died. And they were more which died from the hailstones than they whom the children of Yasharel slew with the sword. Uh -huh. Then spake Joshua to the Lord, in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. He said in the sight of all Israel, Son, stand still upon Mount Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Agilon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves on their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. Somebody should have said something. I, I don't know if you understood what I just read. Maybe I better get the good news version, Pastor. I don't know if anybody understood that. And the sun stood still. Maybe I better go back. One more verse, 12. Then, jo then, then spake Joshua unto the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of all Israel, Son, stand still. Stand thou still upon Gibeon. And moon, you stand still in the valley of Angelon. And the sun stood still, and the moon stayed until the people avenged themselves upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Joshua? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hastened not to go down about a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after that the Lord hearkened to the voice of a man. For the Lord fought for Israel. Okay? All right. So I gave you the story how the Gibeonites tricked Joshua, made a covenant with them, and now they're in trouble and they're calling, I, might, I don't know if I said uh, uh, the Amorites or if I said Amalekites, but the Amorites. And so now they're in trouble and they're calling Joshua to come defend them. Joshua and his army marches all night long to get to where the battle is. And they get there and they've been marching all night long. They're tired. They're hungry. But they immediately engage in the battle. 
And now they're losing, they're losing the sun. The sun is about to go down, and we're going to have to fight this thing again tomorrow. And Joshua said, that's not going to happen. And he said to the sun, you stand still over yes. Gibeon. Yes. And he said to the moon, you stand still over Agilon. And don't you two do what you normally do. And so the Bible says that the sun and the moon stood still for about the space of a day. How long is a day? 24 hours. So the sun and the moon stood still for about, uh, uh, approximately, for about the space of a day. Okay, is not this written in the book of Joshua? Let's see here. Tommy, this is my Sefer Bible. And let me see if I can go to, you going to put that on your list? <laughs> I'm going to see if I can go to, uh, I'm going to the book of Jasher, and I'm going to chapter 88. Somebody's helping me. Who's saying something? Somebody say something? I'm going, huh? Well, in the book of Jasher, there is. You don't have the book of Jasher in your Bible? Oh, I'm sorry. Huh? No, no. I'm saying the book of Jasher. Okay. J-A-S-H. Let me write it. Okay. What is this lesson today about? What, what is today's lesson about? What was the subject of today's lesson? God's word cites outside sources. So I'm going to an outside source. I have just came out of your Bible, and I'm in the book of Jasher. There were other things being written at the same time that things were going on. And so some of the Bible people uh, quote things from these outside sources. Okay, let me let me get this here. Chapter chapter eighty eight, and I'm going to verse fifty nine. Chapter eighty eight, book of Jasher, verse fifty nine, and. And Yasharel and all the fighting people went up from Gilgal. And Yasharel came suddenly to them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. And Yahuwah, you know who that is, right? Jehovah. And Jehovah confounded them before the children of Yasharel, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Gibeon and pursued them along the way that goes up to, whew, these words are hard to pronounce in, these words are hard to pronounce in, in Hebrew. Let me see if I can cheat a little bit. Huh? This is 50, 60, 70, 80. 50, 60, 70, 80. 50, 60, 70, 80, okay. Oh, I already got a marker in there. Fifty, uh, okay, 50, Joshua 88, 59. And Joshua and all the fighting people went up from Gilgal, and Joshua came suddenly upon them and smote these five kings with a great slaughter. And the Lord confounded them before the children of Yasharel, who smote them with a terrible slaughter in Gibeon, and pursued them along the way that goes up to Beth Horon unto Mekedah. And they fled from the fo before the children of Israel. And while they were fleeing, the Lord sent upon them hailstones from heaven, and more died by the hailstones than the slaughter of the children of Israel. 
And the children of Israel pursued them, and they still smote them on the road, going on and smiting them. And when they were smiting, the day was declining toward evening. And Joshua said in the sight of all the people, Stand still, O sun, stand still thou upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Angelon, until this nation has avenged itself upon his enemies. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Joshua, and the sun stood still in the midst of heavens. And it stood still, this says, six and thirty moments. And the guy puts a little little asterisk here, and he says, I do not have the ability to decipher what six and thirty moments are. And the moon also stood still and hastened not to go down a whole day. And there was no day like that before it or after it. And the Lord hearkened unto the voice of the man, of a man, for the Lord fought for Yasharel. Okay, so now we need to look at uh, something here. How about Joshua 10, 13? Can somebody get that? Brother Sonny, get that for me. Joshua 10, 13. Mm-hmm. upon their enemies. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Question mark. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, so that question mark to me means some people knew, some didn't know, but now they know. Well, I, I mean, uh, it's, uh, you know, we, we, act, we talk like that sometimes. We say, like, isn't the Lord your sustainer? Isn't the Lord your provider? Hasn't the Lord taken care of you all these years? We talk like that sometimes, okay? Is, it not this, is not this written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of the heavens and hasted not to go down about a whole day. Okay, so I read it to you out of the book of Jasher, mm -hmm. all right? And I read it to you, I believe I read it to you out of, the King James as well, okay? So this is the book of Joshua. I don't understand why, but this gentleman says over here in the lesson, he says this book is no longer available. I don't know exactly why he said that. I don't know why he doesn't have it. But this is the book of Joshua. And uh, I was showing Tommy, this is my Sefer, and it has the book of Joshua in it, the book of Enoch, and several other books. Should you read it? Since they're quoting outside sources, the Bible. Yes, sir. Okay, okay. Should you read it? If you read, if you have read Mark, Matthew, Luke, and John, if you have read the five books of Moses, if you have read Psalms, if you have read Proverbs, if you have read your prophets, major and minor, if you have read the books of Paul, then why not read that? But, I would emphasize to you, make sure you know this first, okay? This is your bread and butter, right? This, the book of Joshua, is what they call second canon. Some people had problems with it, uh, maybe like Martin Luther. Some guys wanted it in the Bible. Some guys didn't want it in the Bible. Okay, so some of them voted for it to be in. Some of them voted for it to be out. You in here are called, I think you guys are called Protestants. Is that the word that you guys are? Are you guys Protestants? Pentecostal Protestants. Pentecostal Protestants. Anybody else in here is a Protestant? Is anybody in here a Catholic? <laughs> Does anybody in here know the difference between Catholics and Protestants? Okay, some, something, some things you guys need to look into. Um, so some of these books are in the Catholic Bible. Most of them are not 
in the Protestant Bible. But yes, should you be reading this? And I said, yes, but after you know this, make sure you know this. Yes, ma'am. That's first canon. This is second canon. So as God's word cites outside sources, Mm -hmm. these are the outside sources to understand the timing. Yes, the culture. Yeah, yeah. And so we we go to our history Bibles, I mean books. Yes. We go to commentaries. We go to Google and to to look back in the past to understand things. That's what we call the word of God. This is the foundation. Yes. Yes, that's the foundation. We don't want to read Josh, Joshua, Joshua. No, you don't want to just. No. Yeah, that's what I said. Read your Moses first. Exactly. Read your prophets first. Exactly. Read your Kings and Chronicles and all of those things first. And then after you know your Bible, then you can read these things. But these guys knew their Bible first, or these guys, and they could quote these outside sources because they knew the people were living in that time and the people were exposed to it and they incorporated it to help their message. Okay, I need to get on with it here now. So the sun stood still about 24 hours. Okay, 24, about 24 hours. So I'm going to say the sun stood still 23 hours and 20 minutes. Okay, because in the book of Kings, how about this, Brother Sonny? Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter twenty. Second Kings, chapter twenty. Verse 9. Second Kings chapter 20, verse 9 says, And Isaiah said, This sign shalt thou have of the Lord, that the Lord will do the thing that he hath spoken. Shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or go back 10 degrees? Okay. Better let me give the background, and then we'll let you finish reading that. Okay, so Hezekiah is sick, and Hezekiah is dying, okay? And so the prophet comes to Hezekiah and says, God is going to heal you, okay? And he's going to restore you and make you well and make you whole. And so Hezekiah said, well, what sign will I have that I'm going to be healed and made whole? And so the prophet said, well... What do you want? Would you like to see the sun uh, go forward or would you like to see the sun go backwards or the time go forward or time goes backwards? They had a thing. They didn't have what we have, wristwatch. They had a sundial. Do you want the time on the sundial to go forward 10 degrees or do you want it to go backwards 10 degrees? And Hezekiah says the sun is always going forward. Time always goes forward. How would that be showing me something if time goes forward 10 degrees? Make it go backwards 10 degrees. And then I'll accept that as a sign. Okay. So we got, you said that there are 24 hours in a day. Okay. 360 degrees. On a sundial divided by 24, what is that? 360 divided by 24? Is that right? Somebody help me. Is that right? Okay. So it's 15. So 15 degrees equals 60 minutes, okay? So then um, 10 degrees 
equals 40 minutes. And 5 degrees equals 20 minutes. 4, 3, 2, 1. Sorry, I'm standing in front of you. So 4 degrees is 16 minutes. 3 degrees is 12 minutes. 2 degrees is 8 minutes. 1 degree is 4 minutes. Okay, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 40, 60, all right? So, he said, Ten degrees is equal to 40 minutes. Right there. I want the sundial. You guys know what a sundial is? It's this thing like this. And it's got this thing like an arrow there. And as the sun shines on it, the sun, you can tell time by using a sundial. Are you familiar with that so far? Okay. So, 10 degrees on the sundial is 40 minutes. So he says, I want the sun on the sundial to go backwards 10 degrees, which is equal to 40 minutes. So if that is the case right there, look at this up here. The sun stood still in the valley of Agilon. How long? About the space of a day. 23 hours and 20 minutes, and here's your other 40 minutes right there, which makes a whole day. If the Bible is off by 40 minutes, all of heaven is wrong. Everything is wrong if the Bible is off by 40 minutes. So there's your missing 40 minutes from this day right here. The Bible is accurate. You have your 23 hours and 20 minutes where the sun is standing still in the valley of it. The sun is in Gibeon and the moon is in the valley of Agilon. And then you pick up your other 40 minutes for Hezekiah when the sundial went back 10 degrees. 23 hours and 20 minutes plus 40, 40 more minutes equals a 24-hour day. There's your missing day in the Bible, okay? It's all there. It's all there. God worked it all out, okay? All right. So let me look at another one of these. Let's, let's go to Acts 17th chapter. Let's see, David. There was another one here. Let me see if I, did I write that one down? The use of the bow. Let's see, I was is it Joshua 56. Um, I just want to see if I put that one in, in my notes. 50, 56, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 117. That was the next one in the lesson. 2 Samuel chapter 1, verse 17. Can we go there just for a minute? Second Samuel chapter Oh, boy. Hmm. Guess we better, it's a lot here, but I guess we better start at verse 1. Um, second Samuel, second book of Samuel, chapter 1, 
Second book of Samuel, chapter 1. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziglag, there came to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the camp from Saul with his clothes torn and dirt upon his head. And so it was when he came to David that he fell to the earth and did obeisance to him. And David said unto the man, From where did you come? And he said unto him, to him, Out of the camp of Yasharel am I escaped. And David said to him, How went the matter? How did things happen there? I prayed he tell me. And he answered, that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen dead. Saul and Jonathan, his son, are also dead. And David said to the young man that told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? And the young man that told him said, I happened by chance upon, upon Mount Gilboa. Behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and lo, the chariots and the horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me and called unto me. And I answered, Here I am. And he said to me, Who are you? And he answered, I am an Amalekite. And he said to me again, Stand, I pray thee, upon me and slay me. For anguish is come upon me because my life is yet whole in me. He said, I'm, I'm mortally wounded, but I'm not dying yet. So I stood upon him and slew him because I was sure he could not live after that he was fallen. And I took the crown that was upon his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them to you, my Lord. And David took a hold of his clothes and he tore them. And likewise did all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until the evening for Saul and Jonathan, his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Yahshua, because they were fallen by the sword. And David said unto the young man that told him, Where are you from? And he answered, I am a stranger and an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How was thou not afraid to stretch forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed. And David called the young men and said, Go near and fall upon him. And he smote him that he died. And David said, Thou blood be upon your head, for your mouth has testified against yourself, saying that you have slayed the Lord's anointed. And David lamented all with this lamentation over Saul and Jonathan, his son. And he bade them to teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. Okay? So, I turn now to, uh, this is the book of Joshua, chapter 56, verse 9. And this is Jacob when he is getting ready to die. And he's talking to his sons and he's telling his sons how to deal with his body when he dies. All right? And he says here, And on the next day Jacob again called his sons and they all assembled and came before him and sat before him. And Jacob on that day blessed his sons before his death. Each man did he bless according to his blessing. Behold, it is written in the book of the law of the Lord pertaining to Yasharel. And Jacob said to Judah, I know, my son, that you are a mighty man for your brethren. Reign over them and thy sons shall reign over their sons forever. Only teach your sons the bow and all the weapons of war 
in order that they may fight the battles of their brother who rule over their enemies. Just like it said over here, uh, David said, also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. It was a song that they sung. Teach your children how to use the weapons of war. Make sure. I need to make sure that Julio knows how to use the Bible. I need to make sure that Julio has been exposed to prayer and how to pray. Make sure that your children know how to use the bow and all the weapons of war. This is what is being said in the book of Samuel, and this is what it was saying in the book of Jasher. What this is all going back to is quoting outside sources. Make sure that your children know how to use, uh, make sure your children know how to use the bow, the weapons of war. Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. And from there, David goes on and he gives this beautiful song about how Jonathan and David are slain the gazelle of Israel, the prince of Israel, Jonathan and David, both of them were slain in this war. But he says, just this one thing, make sure that your children know how to use the weapons of war. All right? So that's what this second, second Samuel uh, 1, 17, and David lamented with this lament over Saul and Jonathan, his son. Also, he bade them to, te to teach the children of Judah the use of the bow as it is written in the book of Jasher. If this is not making sense to you, you, you feel free to ask some questions. I, if anybody has a question, please ask the question, okay? All right? I don't see no hands going up, okay? Okay. So we got our 24-hour day, 23 hours and 20 minutes. Then we got the missing 40 minutes. That's, that's something else right there. But this is where the sun stood still in the valley of Gibeon and the moon in the valley of Agilon. Isn't this written in the book of Jasher? This is in an outside source. Yeah. All right? And so now we're looking at, John, at David, looking at the death of Saul and Jonathan, and, and David is saying, make sure that your children know the song, how to use the bow and the weapons of war. And so over here, when Jonathan and David are killed, J David wants them to sing this song right now about the use of the bow and the use of the weapons of war. It's a song that was sung in honor, th in honor of Jonathan and David. No questions? Okay. All right. All right. Well, then let's look at the let's look at another one here. Then, all right. Acts 17, chapter. I'm ready. Acts 17, chapter. Now, when this chapter opens up, everywhere Paul goes to teach, the first thing he does is he goes to the local synagogue. He's teaching the Jews in the local synagogue. Now, he's not in Jerusalem. He's not in Judea. He was the apostle to the Gentile world. And they are going out on missionary trips, evangelizing the world. And as he goes and he preaches in these various synagogues, he's telling them that Jesus is the Messiah. Just like we read last week where Peter said, this same Jesus whom you have crucified, God has made him both Lord and Christ. Paul was teaching the same thing. The same Jesus that you guys have rejected, this same Jesus is the Lord and Christ. So it, it created an uproar, all right? 
And so Paul would get chased out of one town. He'd go to the next town, and he'd do the same thing, and he'd get chased out of that town. Okay, so let's look at this here. Let's look at verse 10, Acts 17, verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent Paul, sent away Paul and Silas by night into Berea, Berea, who coming thither went to the synagogue of the Jews. Soon as he went to Berea, he went right back to the synagogue of the Jews again to teach the ones in Berea. And it says Paul and Silas had to leave by night because these people of the town wanted to kill them for teaching that Jesus is the Lord. Jesus is God. Verse 11. And these of Berea were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind. And they searched the scripture daily whether those things were so. So as Paul is preaching to them, they're searching the scriptures. Are they searching the New Testament? No. Why not? Because it wasn't there yet. They're searching the Old Testament scriptures to see if what Paul is saying is conforming to the scriptures. Okay. Verse 12. Therefore, many of them believed also of honorable women, which were Greeks, and not a few Greek men. This was even in last week's lesson. This is a continuation of the scriptures that we had from last week. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came there also and stirred up the people. These same ones from Thessalonica that ran Paul out of town would have killed him about the word of God. Now they found out he's in Berea and they've come there to make trouble for him. Verse 14. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheos abode there still. Verse 15. And they that conducted Paul brought him to Athens. And receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timothy for them to come unto him with all speed, they departed. Okay, when you guys get... Everything established over there. Come and join me. Now, verse 16. We're getting closer to our lesson. That's some introduction right, right there. Now, while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred. His spirit was provoked within him when he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. He beheld the city full of idols. You start dealing with the Athens. You start dealing with these Greeks. You start dealing with the Roman culture. You start dealing with the Athens and, and all of the Greeks and Mount Olympus and all this kind of stuff. There was no place on earth where there were more idols. There was no place on earth where there were more statues. There was no place on earth where there were more temples to false gods. So while Paul waited for them, Timothy and Silas, to come, while he waited for them in Athens, his spirit was stirred. It was provoked when he saw the city wholly given, totally given to idolatry. And he beheld the city full of idols. Therefore, he disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews. So what did he do? He went right to the synagogue and started arguing with the Jews there in Athens. With the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Okay, in the market, this would be like, uh, this would be like hanging out down at City Hall. Or we might say it would be like hanging out at the flea market. 
Everybody's going to come to the flea market. You're going to buy your daily bread. You're going to buy your daily piece of meat to cook for dinner. This is the marketplace, okay? Uh, uh, you, it might be like a farmer's market. But this is where everybody was hanging out. And so Paul would go teach in the morning in the synagogue. And then in the evening, he'd come out and he'd preach at the marketplace. He'd get him a little soapbox and stand up on a soapbox and just start teaching that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is Lord. You guys got all these idols. You guys got all these statues. You got, uh, guys got all these temples. That's not God. And so he would tell them about Jesus. Anybody who would meet with him. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and the Stoics encountered him. Now, certain, certain philosophers of the Epicureans. Epicureans were lovers of pleasure. We would call them today hedonists. They live for life. They live for the gusto. They live. What, what, what do we drink these days? Uh, 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 is it but but what do we? I don't know what we drink these days. But they water. go for huh? Water. Oh, we drink water. Okay. I, I was trying to see if I could get somebody to. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to catch somebody, Pastor. Uh huh. Modelo. Okay. They would you know go for all the gusto you can. They believed in enjoying life. They were hedonists. Live for pleasure. The Epicureans. Okay? They did not believe in the resurrection of the body. Some of them did not believe in the mortality of the soul. And then there were the Stoics. The Stoics were, the, were different. You know what the word Stoic means? It's, it's like a lot of you guys. Emotionalists. No matter what I say, I can't get anything out of you. <laughs> I can't get you to throw a tomato at me, and I can't get you to say amen. You're stoic. You're just looking at me like, what is he talking about? Okay? So the stoics were different than the Epicureans. They believed in, uh, I'm not going for all Augusto. I believe that fate controls my life. There is nothing to be happy about, nothing to be sad about. I'm just going to take the middle road. All right. So anyway, uh, this this certain philosophers of the Epicurean and the Stoics encountered him, and some said, "What will this babbler? What is this talker saying?" Others, some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods, because he preached unto them Jesus. And the resurrection. What the, where did this guy come from with this new something? Talking about Jesus. Talking about resurrection. We don't believe in no resurrection. Resurrection of the body? Buddy, when you die, it's over. Forget about it. Okay? That's what they believe. And Paul is there preaching about the resurrection. There's going to be a resurrection. Jesus rose and you're going to rise. Some are going to rise and go to be with him. Some are going to be raised and they're going to go somewhere else. He's teaching about the resurrection. And they took him. This is verse 19, chapter 17, verse 19. And they took him and they brought him unto Areopagus. They brought him to Mars Hills, saying, We may know, may we know what new what this new doctrine whereof you speaketh is. Would you tell us about this new doctrine? For you are bringing a strange thing to our ears. We would know also, therefore, what these things mean. Verse 20, for all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear of some new thing. That's all we care about today. Some new app on our phone. I got, a, I got an app on my phone that, that, I mean, Julio can tell you, he can do his app and he can tell you what star it is. He can identify all the stars. By looking at an app on his phone. 
You got apps on your phone. You got apps that do this and apps that do that. And that's all we care about these days. Our apps and TikTok and all of that kind of stuff. Am I right or am I wrong? Okay. All right. All right. So that's what the Athenians, they wanted to hear some new thing. What's this thing that this babbler is talking about? He's talking about the resurrection of the dead, and it sounds like he's introducing some new God by the name of Jesus. Let's keep reading. Verse 22. Then Paul stood up in the midst of Mars Hill, and he said, You men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. You guys are very religious, but you don't know God. And there's a lot of people around us like that. Very, very, very religious, but they don't have a relationship. And that's what Paul was saying to them. You are too superstitious. You are too religious but you don't have a real relationship. For as I passed by and I beheld your devotions, that I observed the objects of your worship, I found an altar with this inscription, to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship and declare, whom therefore you ignorantly worship, him I declare to you. You guys have a tomb. You know, he said, I was going through your city, and I happened to notice that you guys have wanted to cover all your bases. So you built a monument to the unknown God. There are so many gods here in Athens. There's so many statues. There's so many temples. You guys don't want to leave any God out. You don't want to leave Hercules out. You don't want to leave out uh, uh, Aphrodite. You don't want to leave out any of the gods of Greece. Wonder Woman. <laughs> you don't want to leave out any of the gods of the Romans. And so to cover yourselves, you guys built a monument to the unknown God. We don't know him, but, make, but to make sure we don't offend him, because if he's there and we've built all these temples to these other gods who are not really God, if he really turns out to be God, we better cover our bases and build a monument to him too. Let's build a monument to the unknown God to the God that we don't know, just in case, okay? So Paul says, For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom you therefore ignorantly worship. They come by and give some worship to the unknown God. They didn't know him. They don't know his name. They don't know anything about him. But just to cover their bases, we better give him a little worship too. Right? He said, him, the unknown God, that's who I'm declaring to you. Let me tell you about him. And now he's going to get into telling about it. Okay? God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. All these temples you have built, ignorant worship. God does not live in your temples. In him, we live, move, and have our being. He he, in, in him is the whole world. In him is the whole solar system. In him is the whole universe. We're in him. He doesn't live in our temples. Okay? God who made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands 
as though he needed anything. God doesn't need you to come every day with a, you, you, go to the, you go to some restaurant sometimes and you see at the door, they got a little thing there on the floor and they got some fruit on it. I, I can't call any names, but, but they bring fruit. They, they bring some food and they put it on that little idol every day for their God. He's saying here, neither is our God worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. He doesn't need you to bring him a basket of food every day. He doesn't need you to put him a bottle of water, buy a little statue every day for him to drink the bottle of water, or at the end of the day, you take the water and pour it out and throw the food away and bring some more food the next day. Seeing that he is the giver of life and breath and all things. He's the one that's giving to us. He doesn't need us to give him things like that. And has made of one blood all nations of men to dwell on the face of the earth. And has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. He decided when we would be born, where, would we, where we would live. This is all in God's plan. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from any of us. If you would just seek him, you would find him. He's not far. He's not hiding. God determined that we would be born in the United States. God determined that we would be born in the 20th century. This was God's doing. He knows where we were born. He knows when we were born. And he set our boundaries. And he's just saying, all you got to do is Because of bad reason. So in in his uh his his scriptures are called surahs. And if I was to go and read one of his surahs to him, and he'd say, But my book is better. And then I'd read to him one of my scriptures that's better than one of his surahs. And then I'd read to him another one of his surahs. And then I'd read a scripture from my Bible that's better than his surah again. And if I kept doing that, eventually he would be impressed like, wow, you took the time to learn my book so that you could talk to me about your God in my book. How your God is better than my God. And so that's what Paul is doing right here. Paul let them know, I know what you believe in. I know your Athenian prophets. I know what they teach, but everything you're doing is idolatry. Your statues, your monuments, your temple, it's all ignorant worship. This unknown God that you have, I'm here telling you who the unknown God is. It's Jesus. I'm giving you the name. I'm identifying him for you, okay? Let me finish this. All right. 
for as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the God is like unto a gold. He says you got all of your gold statues. Don't think of, if we are the offspring of God, then he's not something made out of gold. And he goes on to say, and he's not something made out of, what did he say, man? What did he say? Oh, okay. He's not like unto gold or silver or stone. Graven images is what Paul is trying to bring home. He's not like these things, gold, silver, or your graven images. He says, at the time of the ignorance, at the time of the in- ignorant ages, God waits. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained. Wherefore, or whereof he has given assurance unto all men that in that he raised him from the dead. Okay? Says, he says, God has appointed a day when he's going to judge every man by that man, the one that I'm telling you about. You have your tomb to the unknown God. You're trying to cover all of your bases. But there is a real God, and his name is Jesus, whom God has raised him from the dead, and God is going to judge the world by Jesus. Verse 31, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained, whereas he has given assurance to all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Now, this is the last verse I'm going to let you read. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, oh man, what are you talking about, resurrection of the dead? And others said, we will hear you again in this matter. So Paul departed from among them. How be it? Certain men played to him and believed. Among them was Dionysius, the area uh, the area pogate, and a woman named Damaris, and others with her. Okay, so let me give you the conclusion to this now. They had all of these gods, all of the gods that they wanted to proclaim. They had all of the Romans' gods. They had all of the Athenian gods. They had all of the gods and temples that they wanted. For any man to introduce there, in this city of Athens, a new god, it was against the law. That's why these men, when Paul was speaking in the marketplace, (coughs) they got Paul and they brought him to Mars Hill to the area of God. Ariel, uh, Ariel, Aerogopus, Ariel, 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 they brought him there to question Paul. This was like bringing him before the Supreme Court. And this was giving Paul a chance to speak, okay? And if when Paul spoke, if he had brought up some new God, they would have killed Paul. It was against the law to introduce there in Athens. They had the gods that they wanted. But as Paul was walking around and he was seeing all of this idolatry, the Bible says his heart was stirred in him. Jeremiah said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I've got to speak. I've got to preach. I've got to teach them. And so he went to the marketplace, and he was preaching and teaching that Jesus is God. And then these 
certain, the philosophers came upon him, the Epicureans and the Stoics, and they heard him teaching, and they said, okay, we're taking you to the Supreme Court. You're going to give this man in front of the Supreme Court. And if it's determined that you are introducing a new God, you're done for. Okay? Look at what God did for Paul. Paul says, as I was walking around, I noticed that you had a tomb to the unknown God. That one that you call the unknown God, that's the one I'm teaching. I'm not teaching something new. You already got a, a, a monument built to him. And I'm just telling you his name. I'm telling you who he is. You've been worshiping him ignorantly. But I'm just telling you who it is. You, you got no reason to cut my head off. I'm just telling you what you were doing in ignorance, but I'm putting a name to it. And then when they heard him speak of the resurrection, some said, oh, let's get out of here. This guy talking about the resurrection of the dead, and they walked away. And others said, we need to hear more. And that one man that said, I'm going to stay with you, Paul, he was the governor of the city. And then that woman, she was somebody too. They stayed with Paul. How many does God do for you? Remember when, when the Ethiopian eunuch was traveling on his way back home and God said to him, Son, you hear what they did? There was a great revival going on. And God spoke to Philip and said, I want you to leave the revival and go and join yourself down here with this Ethiopian eunuch in a lonely road. He said, God, I'm the one that started this revival. This thing is big. I'm, I'm on the ticket. I'm, I'm, I'm the one that's supposed to be heading this thing up. Yeah, I'm the headliner. And God said, no, I want you to go talk to one man on a lonely road out there. And he went, and God used him to witness to the Ethiopian eunuch. And when that guy got home to Ethiopia, he set free many EDP may be like this forever, but it just takes the one. It takes just one that EDP wins to the Lord. That one may go out there and win the world for Jesus Christ. We don't have to have 50,000 in here. If we can win one Ethiopian unit, he can go home and win his people. Okay? Because God knows what he's doing. And so God told Paul, how to deal with them. This unknown God, this monument that you built in ignorance. Let me tell you who he is. His name is Jesus Christ. He loves you. He died for your sins. He's risen from the dead. And he's going to judge the world. You need to get right. At the time of your ignorance, God was weeping at you. And now he commands all men everywhere to repent. What was the lesson last week? And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly, sound came from heaven as if a rushing mighty wind. Peter got up and speak, preached his first message. What did he say? Repent. And the same message of Jesus, the same message of Paul, the same message of Peter. At the time of the ignorant ages, they didn't know what to do or say. Amen. All right. Y'all understand? Amen. No, you didn't. All right. I, I just wrote down a few little things here, Brother Joey. Not, not to add, but just so that you would understand, a teacher searches beyond. A teacher searches the thesaurus, the encyclopedias, other books, you know, if you've read these things that way, see, now you're searching the scriptures. I think it's mine. So 
our lesson was outside, outside these outside. God's word cites outside sources. And sometimes we need to go outside to understand God's word. And so this is what Brother Joey was telling us. When in the book of Acts, we'll finish with the book of Acts, and I'm not going through his lesson again. It says, what kind of idols he was talking about? Do you know the idols that were in the city of Athens? 99% will say no, because you never search the scriptures. So we have to get out of that to know what kind of idols that he was talking about. So this way, when a Muslim friend comes, you know he's going to talk about whom? I don't know. Why don't you know? Some of us don't even know God's word. Why do we get a dictionary when we don't understand a word? That's an outside source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And many of us just let it, well, I don't know, I didn't understand. And we walk away. You're never going to learn God's word. You're going to be fooled by the enemy. Because you don't search the scriptures. We need to go beyond. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Where did this happen at? Why did it happen? Some people just remember that he died on the cross, but they don't even know the names names of the place uh, of what? Give me one name that's called. Golgotha. Where else? It's also called? Gethsemane and prayed there. Nope, nope. The hill? Oh. Um, skull. Golgotha, skull. Calvary, it's all the same place. Yeah. See, but when you and I speak, we must understand so that as we're speaking, so that people, we know what they're talking about. When you talk to your, your, uh, uh, your Muslim friends, know what they're doing. No, why, excuse me, I gotta, it's my hour of prayer. Do you know that many of them take, take time to pray? Which way do they pray? <coughs> they pray to the east. Amen. Why? Amen. That's Mecca is at. Ah, Mecca is there. Yeah. What is Mecca? Ah, oh, I don't even know what that is. They have to journey there all of do you know that they have to do a pilgrimage yeah. once, at least once in their lifetime? Everybody needs to go to Mecca. Everybody. If they're Muslim. If they're able to, they must go there. You, you, you can see it's a worldwide thing. And this is what Brother Joey is trying to tell us to go to outside source. But your Bible is your solitude source. Your Bible is your solitude source. So we need to look at those things. We need to learn from those areas. This is why we don't know and we get so deceived. And this is why we, we sometimes say, I didn't understand. You know what they told me over there when I visited over there? First of all, what are you doing over there when you should be here and learning God's word all together? Lots of people go from place to place to place, and they, they have such a smorgasbord of food, they don't know, and they can't even remember what they tasted. Remember that. You've got to get solid word of God, and this is what a teacher does. You have your computer. Use your dictionary. Use your thesaurus. Use your encyclopedia. Why? So you could understand. Understand those areas. And I, I, I saw you all become so quiet. And Brother Joey, that's why I had to come and do this. Why? Because it, it shut many of you off. <laughs> it shut many of you off. Where he's... You said, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand what he's talking about. This is why we, as we read God's word, this is why as you, as you look at, at the lesson, God's word cites. What does the word cite mean? I don't know. I'm just reading it. God's word cites outside sources. We, we must know what the word of God is telling us so that when our brother gets up here, he's going to teach you truth. 
You have to know that. You have to know it's not deception. You have to know these areas. And so because you've already learned these things, uh, the book, uh, if you look in your Bible, the book of uh, Jashur, it, it's written there. Here you have Alexander the Great. Here you have Josephus. Here you have a lot of different. What do we know about these? The Bible talks about them. But we don't know them. You know why? We're just surface reading people. You need to search the scripture. If there is a word that you don't understand. I, I hear on Acts 17, 17, Epicurean, the people of Epicurean. What were they? Who were they? I don't know. I'm, I'm Mexican. <laughs> and we stop. You need to know God's word. Because easily this is why someone comes and tickles your ear and gives you false doctrine. And easily people are deceived. And, and the spirit of deception is going round and round. And many people are being deceived because they don't know the word, God's word. Search. What does the word search mean? Go, go, go. Search. Take this. Search, search, search until you find. Research what you're doing. Why do we use commentaries? Explain. Why do we use, uh, what else? Dictionaries. Why do we use these areas to explain God's word to us? We need to know the meaning of God's word. And this is what our Sunday school is all about. So we can learn and ask questions. Uh, our teachers are up here because they've already searched. Brother Joey comes with his 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 books and so that we would understand these areas. Don't be afraid. We will never deceive you as men and women of teachers in the word of God here in this body of Christ. I want you to understand that. And, and many of you, Brother Joey, I'm sorry. This is why I, I, I'm mentioning to all of them because they kind of got stunned. Yes. But why? Because you don't search the scriptures as you should. We need to know the meanings of, of these words and, and why. What, what, like I said earlier, what idols was, was Paul talking about? What were they talking about? I don't know. There was a lot of idols. Yes. Do you know that some of your children wear idols on their chains and necks that you don't even know about? On the t-shirts. <laughs> the bracelets. The bracelets. Too. Bracelets. T-shirts. Clothing. And you don't even understand it. The Star of David has how many points? Six. And the Star of Satan has five. Upside down. Learn these areas because the enemy will come and attack us till we learn. When we were studying the uh, and going through religions, talking about different religions, those that took the class we went, and, and I was doing the, the religion of Buddhism, and I thought, oh, I want to be a Buddha. <laughs> because by the time they reach the levels, they're totally at peace. And you must learn these areas. Our peace comes from God. It's not in the works that we do. It's not in things that way. Search the scriptures, and it's okay to use other sources, but be careful. If you want to bring me a book, I've had many people bring me a Pastor, is this a good book for me to read? I'll tell you yes or no. Talk to Brother Joey. Talk to your teachers. Talk to any one of the elders here, and they will let you know. Why? Because we want you to be careful. Don't feed off a smorgasbord that you don't know what food you're eating. Now we're ready to stand and worship the Lord. All right? All right. Come on. Let's stand and let's thank the Lord. I, I, I know that uh, I saw, I felt everyone just kind of, just like, I don't Amen. understand. And you shut down. Don't, don't shut down in your spirit. 
Nothing will come from this pulpit that is going to hurt you. It will always bring edification and help you to, to go. Now, from this day, I, I, I want to see you and hear that you've gone through other, other sources. Maybe a history. I, I flunked history in, 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 in high school. Hallelujah. <laughs> but now I try to search and I said, ah, why didn't I do that back then? <laughs> all these areas because they're foundations for us of learning God's words they're foundations for us and we just thank the Lord because God has been good to us thank you sister Rita so I was making some little notes there so that I could just thank the Lord you know uh, uh, of all these areas and just continue to give the Lord glory for all things because how do we know the unknown God? We study. And the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto a, 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 a workman. Needeth not to be ashamed. Don't let somebody as you converse with them shut you down and have nothing to say. There always should be something in your heart. Let's sing this chorus in the presence of Jehovah, in Amen. the presence of Yahweh, <laughs> in the presence of Yeshua, <laughs> in the presence of, uh, of Adonai, in the presence of, of Emmanuel. It's all the same. And this is where some people get confused because they don't understand God's word. Ask there's nothing wrong. You, we should be asking questions. In the presence of Jehovah, of Jehovah, God Almighty, God Almighty. You got any troubles? Troubles vanish. Hearts are mended. When we're in the presence. When we're in the presence. asking for her sons and her husband Alex Richard Rudy Lito and their families the Lord knows each and every one of them by name and he knows what he's doing in each and every one of their lives here's another mother Rita asking prayer for her sons Eddie and Tony for addictions father you know their lives and you know their hearts but as mamas, Lord God, we always bring them to your throne of grace and mercy, Father God. 
We pray, Lord God, that you will continue, Lord God. Another mother, Lord God, asking for her son, Manny, Lord God. Her godmother, Carmen, Lord God, and their families, Lord God. Sister Rosie's prayer, Lord God. That is her prayer. And each and every one of us have that prayer of our hearts, Father God. A mom, Lord God. Sister Dora asking for her her uh, her daughter Shaylee, the graduation for her, that she's accomplishing her master's degree, Lord God. We're thankful, Lord God, for Shaylee, Lord God. We're praying for Tessa, Lord God. She'll be having surgery, Lord Jesus, on May the 26th. Lord, that you will continue, Lord God, to touch, Lord God, Tessa's life. Help Tessa, Lord God, to bring back the word in her life, Father God. We pray for our rally, Lord God, that's coming June 10th. Lord Jesus, that your spirit is already moving hearts in Jesus' name. Brother Sonny and Sister Mary are asking for their families, their sons, their daughters. Lord God, that God's favor and protection will always be upon them, Lord God. As parents, Lord Jesus, it is you, Lord God. You can do the work that needs to be done in their lives, Father. And Father, we pray our sister Lisa always, Lord God, for her mom, Alita, Lord God, for Reyes and Samiko and Melinda, Father, for Liz and for Aiden, Lord Jesus, and for Julia, for Joshua, Lord God, for Rose and Theo Tacho and Jennifer's family. They're still going through the, the valley of grief, my God. For those in the military, Lord God, Joshua, Lord God, Robert, Lord God, Christian, Lord Jesus, and their journey, Lord God, as they travel to and fro, Father God, protection over their lives. Tommy and Monica, Lord, for their children, for their grandchildren, for themselves, Lord God, for guidance and for faith, and for them to keep their eyes on you, Lord God. Lord Lisa's asking especially for her brother, La Reyes, for healing in his body. Uh, he was taken again to the hospital yesterday, and he's not doing well. So, Father, put your hand around Reyes' life. Reyes has served you all his life, Lord God. Father God, as we, Lord, come in unity with our sister Lisa, his wife Sumiko, his children, Lord God, that you will, Lord God, put your hand around Reyes' life, Father God. Pastor Isaac and Amber Espinosa, they're asking for strength for their family and for healing. And Father God, here is a, a, a young pastor and his wife, Father God. They need you, Lord God. The circumstances of life, Lord God, areas that sometimes they have not gone through, but they will learn, Lord God. Father God, help them to keep their faith and trust in you. They have faith in you, Lord God. Just build it higher, Father God, so that we would know the hand of work is going, Lord God. We believe that father god we pray for strength lord god for amber as she stands in the gap also lord god for her sister l lord god and father god for her mom lord god her other sisters and family lord god pastor isaac lord god being the pastor for the congregation lord god that is going through areas lord god in their lives we pray for that father god that you would strengthen this lord god man and woman of god Father God, that you will continue to watch over them. And Father, we pray for our, our Cardona family also, Lord God. My cousins, Lord God, Pat and Robert and Renee, Lord Jesus and Kathy, Father God. In the loss of my Aunt Jenny, Lord Jesus, you would continue to give them the strength that they need, Lord God. When they feel lonely, Lord God, put your hand on their shoulder, Lord Jesus. Lord, keep them busy, Lord God. God, keep them busy that the enemy would not come and attack their lives. And Father, we pray this weekend, Lord God, our men, Lord God, are going to be working on this roof, yes, Lord God. Will. Father God, protection around all the material that we have picked up, Lord God. Father God, that you would help us, Lord God, in every area, Lord God. All hands on deck, Father God. We need each and every one, Lord Jesus. And Father, we need you most of all. Give us wisdom, Lord Lord God, give Brother Tommy the wisdom as he directs 
the leading of the putting on of our roof, Lord God, that every nail is put into right place, every shingle is put into right place, Lord God, and everything could be done according to your will, Father. Father, we need that, Lord God, to be done, Lord Jesus. Uh, Father, it's a, it's all day, Lord God, as we continue to give you praise and thanksgiving for all things. But it's when we sit, Lord God, and we can just be in the presence of God. In Jesus' name. In the presence of Jehovah. God Almighty. God Almighty. Prince of Peace, troubles vanish, troubles vanish, hearts are mended, hearts are mended, when we're in the present, when we're in the present. Of the King, of the King. When we're in the presence of the King, when we're in the presence of the King, just to be in His presence. Yes. When we're in the presence of the King. Hallelujah to be in the presence of God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. And we're going to pray for this uh, young man that was here. Amen. Javier and Reina, praise God, that the Lord would minister into their hearts. Amen. As they continue, Lord, to seek you in everything that they do and all that they are. Amen. That Jesus will just watch over them. Praise God. Well, bless the Lord. Amen. And we're getting ready to go home. Amen. Don't forget during the week time as we worship and praise the Lord and give God the honor and the glory. And as I was saying earlier on Friday, our, our men, our brothers, amen, and, and others are going to be coming in. Uh, all hands on deck, please. Amen. Friday, Saturday, amen. Friday is tear off of all the roof. Saturday is maybe even by Friday night we can, uh-huh, to get the roof back put. We've been praying for this, and we need to get this done. Uh, I tried to pick up one of those little things that way, and it was so heavy. That's why we did not unload the trailer, and it's going to be there. So pray for God's protection over that trailer there. So as we get that, this is why we need a chain of men to go and get them to. Those, need, those things need to get up here. I can't do it, and I don't plan to. But I will be, Sister Vicky. we will be in the kitchen getting lunch ready. Amen, Sister. Amen. We're going we're gonna to be in the kitchen getting lunch ready for all our men that are here Friday and Saturday. Praise God that the Lord. And yet we'll smell. You know what's going to make them work even harder? The tortillas. <laughs> That's all right. If you know somebody, and, and those of you that are watching in Facebook, if they live in the area, we need men to come and help us to get this roof torn apart, amen, because Brother Tommy, uh, I don't think you've ever done a roof, right? Oh, okay, portions of the roof, amen. Amen, that's right, yes, he's the son of a carpenter, praise God. So we are going to, we're going to be putting on the roof, amen, other other brothers and uh, grandchildren are going to be coming in, and, and we need all of your help, amen. Students from the school, hallelujah, praise God, amen, you know, but uh, we still need more help. I was telling Brother Eric that we need two ladders going and two rows of things going up those ladders, it's going to take some guy it's going to take some work if you know anybody 
If you know anybody, if you can't do it, if you know somebody, start asking them, please uh, go to the church uh, here. If you want to be the person to come and bring, give them water, that's your job. All right. Everybody can have a job. Amen. Everybody can do and And we need your help. We need your work. Before I ask for uh, your finances, your money, and the Lord has been providing. Amen. In every area. And we're doing what we can. Amen. And I will have a list of everything so you can see exactly what we spent on everything that's going. And we thank you for that. Yeah. I know some from out of town, they sent us money to help us with our roof. And, and we're thankful to the Lord for all these areas so we give god the praise honor and glory for his goodness and and then uh, right after that we're getting ready for our rally hallelujah amen so we're uh, I, a lot of things are happening during these next few weeks that keep in prayer amen and and it, as soon as you say, Pastor, what can I do? I got a list. Amen. Praise God for all things. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer and thank him for his goodness and his mercy. So, Father, we just give you thanksgiving because you are with us in all, all areas. You will never leave us. Lord God, and... and as, as I look at these daily things, Lord God, yes, things come over my head and I worry, Lord. Will we have sufficient... And God says, I got gotcha. you. My grace is sufficient for you. And I thank the Lord for that because his mercy endures forever. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. And thank you that we could put all these prayer requests before your throne of grace and mercy, Lord God. We know who we are in you, Lord Jesus. We're the head and not the tail. We're on top and not on bottom, Father. And with this, Lord God, we just want to walk with our heads up high to be called the child of the most high God. Because we know the unknown God. Thank you, Lord God, for that. The revelation is in our hearts. He lives with us. He is always with us at all times. May the blessings of God go with you each and everywhere you go. Amen. And you on Facebook, be blessed and pray for us. All things in Jesus' name. And the church says, Amen. God bless you all. Amen. <laughs>